They don't say, oh, somebody up there wants to teach me how to be humble. <laughs> uh, so that I can empathize with all those who have got an E. No, you look at it and ask yourself, why did I get an E? Understand? Okay? Because the Buddha says we understand cause and condition, this is where liberation exists. That's why the first arahants, uh, the Buddha say, causes and condition leads to phenomena. If one understands cause and condition, therein lies the escape. Okay, from suffering. Okay, so when you when you look at apple or oranges or whatever, you immediately understand this concept of what cause and effect. All right, flowers. What? Impermanence. Because the Buddha said, you look at the flower, the flower will remind you of what? By yourself. You are like a bright flower, so young, so lovely to go. And only a matter of time, you are not like me. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, how long, the Buddha said, can flower last? How can the beauty of a flower last? Seven days? Ten days? All finishes. Okay? That is why the meditation of insight, as I told you, the highest form, the Buddha said, is impermanence. If you practice on impermanence, uh, very soon you will automatically learn how to what? Let go. Okay? We suffer because we cling to many things. We think that all this will last forever. All right. So by looking at the flower, you appreciate two things. Ah, it's very beautiful. Okay. But you also accept what will happen to the flower. The flower will what? Wither, turn ugly, and rot. And so the Buddha say it will be so for our body itself. All right. You look at your self, the mirror, and you think it's very wonderful. Then what happens? What happens? Aging. What's what's before aging? Yes. Sick. Okay. Maybe next month, next week, next year, you fall sick. All right. So in Buddhism, nothing has gone wrong. Okay. That's why I jump round. You know, I jump round. Okay. Some of you may know him. A very great motivational Buddhist speaker from Australia. He says when you see your doctor, you walk in. Your doctor will always ask you what, what's wrong with you. Correct. You must tell me. Yes, no, doctor, that's a wrong question. You should ask me what. What's right with me? <laughs> because why, my friend? Sickness is right. Nothing has gone wrong. Understand? Huh? Okay. Someone dies in your family. Anything gone wrong? Nothing has gone wrong. Everything has gone according to the law of what? The flower. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Huh? Okay. When these things happen, you can take it. All right. Like the Buddha said, all union is destined to destined for what? Separation. Alright? If you want to have life, you must expect what? Death. If you want good health, you must expect what? Sickness. Yes. Your gain, you must expect what? Loss. Yes. Understand? Huh? This is natural phenomena. Alright? So when you train, when you look at flower, that's what you think. Okay? Anything happen to you, don't worry. Okay? Next week I I think I'm supposed to be here, I need to check my diary, whether I'm free or not, huh, to conduct the meditation. But, Monday you heard, wow, the brother quite got accident died. It's okay, you understand? Don't worry, huh? Because everything gone according to what? The law of the flower. Who <laughs> 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 just say, when you see light, what do you think about? Light is this term. Are you sure or not? Uh, no, enlightenment. How is it enlightenment? Ah, uh, darkness. Okay. So the Buddha says like a, a man who walks into a dark room, uh, takes light. As you can see, uh, but the Zen saying, uh, 10 million years of darkness, the Zen master said, uh, cannot fight with, you know, just one second of light. When the light shines, uh, even 10 million years of darkness just give way to light. Understand? So how powerful light is. Uh, the kind of simile, huh? should be in your mind when you look at light. What about incense? <coughs> These are Buddhist practice. You know what I'm trying to do for you? I'm trying to tell you there are actually two levels of practice. Understand? One kind of level of practice is just, ah, uh, people say put fruit, put fruit, uh, okay? Your mother say put apple, put apple. Then I asked my mother that day, I said, Ma, can I put durian? No? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Buddha never said cannot. Right? I said, cannot. 
Then I said, what about if I put coconut? Cannot, cannot. <laughs> then I said, I put star fruit, cannot, cannot, cannot. I said, bring bad luck. <laughs> this is one level of practice. Understand? The level of practice is what happens. You do it again and again and again until you lose the meaning. Alright? One this very interesting story which I read was Singapore's first defense minister. Anybody knows? Y'all don't know, never mind. It's okay. Is it Gokinsi? Yes, Gokinsi. You see your currency, uh, Singapore currency, the older one, you see his sign. Gokinsi, Minister of Finance. Some of the older notes are circulated. Alright, he was uh, Singapore's first defense minister as well as Singapore Minister of Finance. When he was the Singapore Minister of Defense, he visited many of the army camps in Singapore. Okay, because he was defense minister, correct? Huh? <laughs> so he had to travel to all the army camps because the British had handed over the control of all the army camps huh, to the Singapore government and he was made as a uh, uh, minister, so the first thing he did was he went to the army camp. All right, so he went to this camp that dealt with artillery. You all know what is artillery? What's artillery? Anybody? Artillery? Cannon. Okay, sometimes you see in the National Day, you see in various countries they shoot the cannon. Okay, in the sky, of course. Huh? All right. <coughs> So he visited the army camp of the artillery, of the Singapore only artillery camp, <coughs> and he watched a demonstration. Uh, and if you ever see this uh, in many uh, foreign, especially in British and American uh, tradition of artillery, you have the artillery, okay? And you have all the soldiers around it, and then the one nearest to the artillery, when the artillery goes, boom! Uh, the officer will, or the man will sit, he will hold like this, you know? Hold like this. His hand hold what we don't hold, just like this. Just a fist in the air like that. So, our first Minister of Defence, uh, when he saw this demonstration, he went around, he, and he asked this, this officer, he said, why do you put your hand like this, you know? And the guy said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I was taught to do like this. Okay, by whom? Then he said, by my officer. So the minister went to ask the officer, why you ask your people when the cannon, the artillery shoot like that? Why you ask them to hold like this? And the officer said, that was how I was taught by my Israeli consultant. Okay, because Singapore, the first army were all taught by the Israelis. Alright? So Mr. Go went to ask the Israeli consultant and said, why do you ask our Singaporean people when the artillery shoot like that? Why the hand must hold like that? He said, oh, because we learned from the British. <laughs> and so when he went to Britain, he visited Sandhurst. You all know where is Sandhurst? Sandhurst is the leading military school, or the top military school of the world. Okay, so he went there and he asked the commander, okay, why is it that, he said, I also know this in Britain, you know, why is it that the cannon goes off, your officers also hold like that? A fist in the air like that. And what did they tell you? We also don't know. <laughs> because that's how we were taught. So, what is that about? Practice. Okay? Routine, remember? Regular. Repeater. And because Dr. Gokeng Sui is a historian, huh? he is actually an academic, he decided to do what? To do what? Research. Why do people go like this? You know why people go like this? Because in the older days, all cannons were tied to horses. Understand? And when you shoot the panda, what happened to the horses? Shock, run away, understand? That's why you have to have somebody to hold the horses. Today, are there horses? <laughs> that is what today's topic is about. Huh? Buzi's practice. Two levels of practice. Okay? One level of practice, you just do, and you do, and you do, and you do, and what happens? You lose the what? The meaning. Okay? Once the meaning goes off, you know what comes in? I can tell you, superstition comes in. But I share with you what my mother tells me. Okay? Incense. Why do you put incense? <coughs> Why do you put incense? Incense. What must incense be in order to qualify as incense? Must it smell wonderful or smell horrible? Wonderful. Okay? But because there's a 
whole purpose of incense, correct? Yet sometimes I go to Buddhist places and they buy the incense. Wow, it's like a smoke grenade, you know. <laughs> I can hardly breathe. There's no scent. Huh? It was just smoke, all right? But why people put incense? Because incense represents what? Represents what? The Buddha say incense represents virtue. What is virtue? Keep your five precepts. Okay? <clears throat> so that when you keep five precepts, what happens? You get a good reputation. You know this? I'm sure you know among yourselves, among your friends, those who got good reputation, bad reputation. How many of you live in the hall? I used to stay in the hall. Almost all of you all. I'm sure you know when you stay in the hall, huh? Some terrible, huh? <laughs> some steal people thing, huh? Some people just waste people's things, huh? take people things from the kitchen without permission. On the other hand, there are hostel lights are very good. Correct, huh? They share. Huh? So as you can see, uh, the Buddha say incense is like that. Okay? Cultivation of what? Virtue. Huh? The Buddha say if your virtue is very strong, it spread far and wide. No wind can blow it away. Incense now, uh, can, uh, can, can we blow it away? Supposing it coming to your direction, can you put a fan to blow it away? You can. Alright? But the Buddha says the incense of sila. Sila means what? Virtue. Nothing can stop it from spreading far and wide. Okay? So when you look at incense, next time what must you do? Virtue. Okay? Your cultivation of your precept. That's what you chanted just now. Huh? Don't what? What's the first one? Don't kill. What's the second one? Don't steal. Third one? Uh, when you're married, no sexual misconduct. Fourth one? No telling of lies. Fifth one is what? No thinking of anything which enters into the body, harms your mind. Understand? Okay? And then water? Yes. Huh? Because water, as you know, in all societies, in all countries, water is first, what is it used for? Cooking. Understand? What else? Washing, drinking, okay? But they all have one similar characteristic. Why? You can use it to wash, you can use it to eat, you can, sorry, to drink, you can use it to wash. Why? Because water has what effect? Yeah, purifying effect. You know this? It cleanses. Huh? So that's why when uh, the Buddha's son, you know Buddha has a son, do you all know that? When the Buddha left the home, he has one, his son was just born, only two days old, okay? He had to make a very difficult decision, to leave or not to leave, okay? If he didn't leave, then the prophecy will come true, he will become what we call a chakravati, universal monarch. He will go and it says, according to the prophets, he will conquer the whole world and become monarch of the world, king of the world, okay? But he decided not to, he decided to find what? Find what? A uh, true enlightenment. Okay? That's why he became the Dharma king in the end. Alright? So when the Buddha left, and he many years later came back to the palace to visit his wife and of course his son. What was the name of the son? Dracula. Uh, Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> Dracula. Okay? Don't worry, Rahula practice Buddhism also can become what? Rahula. Okay? So when the son became his disciple, okay, you know, his son became his disciple, uh, Rahula was very naughty and mischievous. Uh, as a young boy, uh, he would run and hide in his shoe, you know, he probably take an Arahant's robe and hide in another place. Uh, he take another arahant's clothes and keep in another place uh. and then when all these old monks come out from the hut in the morning everything is all misplaced uh. okay why is the slipper so small you know and then one of the small feet will get out and find why the slipper is so big and Rahula will be somewhere laughing his heart uh. 